Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Becoming Podcast. Another wonderful guest with us today, Lisa Jane, and uh, she's going to be chatting with us in a moment. But before we start that, a big shout out and a big thank you to uh, my sponsor, one of my sponsors, Share at webdesignshare.com, who's really helped me so much. So, Share, thank you very much. And I'll say at the beginning quickly and then at the end, please like, share, subscribe, comment um, to help us to share this message with all the wonderful people out there who are doing some fantastic things. So, uh, so yeah, thank you very much. Lisa, hey, welcome. Thanks for coming to, uh, to chat with us on the Becoming podcast. Hi, Jamie. Lovely to meet you we, uh, at last. You know, we seem to sort of meander through each other's posts and what have you. So it's really nice to to sort of have this time to, yeah, speak and share our truth. Yeah, that, it is. And, you know, we do similar things together, um, but not together, but we do similar things in, in yeah. the way that we are living our lives and we want to live our lives. But can, maybe you can start off by telling us a little bit about your journey to where you are right now. Okay, where do you start? Um, I think the the sort of awakening part for me was uh, way back when I was 19 and I lost my granddad and I found him dead in the morning and and that was just at 19 years old. He was the love of my life um, and I was the apple of his and it just started me on this questions, you know, questions, questions, questions and yeah, that was the, definitely the start of my awakening journey where you start to question who, who am I? Why am I here? Why can somebody so precious be taken away like that without any, you know, um, yeah, warning? Mm. And to find him was just, yeah, it was, it was death facing me in that moment and... Um, yeah, it, it's going to change you. It, it definitely is in that moment. So that took me on a, a complete path of awakening to, for me, to to understand who I was and why I was here. And, and, and my granddad is still a guide to me. So it was a very pivotal moment in my life um, to understand, you know, what life and death is. And um, I've been very look a, if that's the right word to experience death um in a profound way and understand that it's nothing to fear and it's 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 a very sacred part of living if we allow for that um so uh, and coming up to the present day uh, i lost my dog a couple of years ago oh he's another soulmate and a guide and um he allowed me to um, go through his death, if you like, um, in a very shamanic way. And spirit allowed me to be open to the whole, the whole picture of death, as in, you know, the portals opening and the angels coming in and the dragons coming in and Archangel Azrael coming in and it, and knowing the day and the time it was going to pass and and then what I did to create that portal so that he could transition in a beautiful way just came from a very deep place from me that I didn't know existed. And so, yeah, there's a lot of doulas out there that are, are coming from this same deep place, the birth doulas, the death doulas, which for me, going through my money key, um really connected deep with the um with the day keepers for me it's about ritual it's about honoring the death and the life cycle and so i feel that i've got something to offer there in the future for people i've worked in palliative care so going back to when my granddad died i did reiki um and i saw a vision of me working with around white coats in that moment and back then I, I was a hairdresser so I was thinking well I'm not going to be a nurse or anything like that so I just disregarded it and uh, it's, you know lo and behold 20 odd years later I'm working in palliative care and I'm working alongside doctors and consultants in fertility care 
and can you see this this sort of death and and birth sort of element is very much been in my life um so yeah and and the reiki journey took 30 years to complete um i i had a very slow process with reiki and um moving forward to may 16 i got diagnosed with breast cancer which again was a complete whew, you know i didn't see that coming and and uh, that took me on a very deep path with myself and that was the start of me waking up completely to who I was um, and a lot of energies came in at that point the Christ consciousness energy and the um, mother earth and the goddess and and it just it just kept opening up and opening up and opening up and opening up so yeah meandering from Reiki my toolbox for me is the chakras crystals um and reiki were my go-to as well as aromatherapy so i trained in all that plant medicine aromatherapy nutrition and that was my toolbox that i took forward with me through you know relationship pregnancy that kind of thing and yeah i think a lot of us as shame if we want to call them ourselves shamans or healers sages we do have that personal toolbox, don't we? That we that we go to when we need some, yeah, some love, some yeah. self love. Yes. Um, so yeah, and I think for me coming out of the breast cancer journey, as any you know viewers that will that have gone through that, um, it didn't change me as a person. I, I think it just highlighted what I was holding on to and the fear, the fear that I was holding on to, which was bringing me down energetically. But on the on the outside, I was he- I looked healthy. I was healthy, I thought. Um, but but emotionally, psychologically, mentally, I wasn't at all. I was just keeping keeping it together. Yeah. Keeping the shit together. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah, that was but interestingly when I came out of the um the 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 sort of therapy um the treatment cancer treatment um i had a voice in in my ear say okay now this part is going to be the hardest part that you've ever lived in any lifetime and i thought what <laughs> i've just got over cancer and now i've got this voice saying no the next bit's going to be the hardest and i ended up getting a lodge in the middle of nowhere and literally two weeks of, of buying this lodge, the the White Eagle came in, the Native American Indians came in, and they took me on this quest to rid me of this fear. And it was it was hardcore. And they took me out into middle of the fields and to be on my own in the dark, which was a complete that was fear in itself for me. And I remember shaking from head to foot and thinking I'm going to die. I'm, I'm literally going to die in this field um, because there was so much fear in my body that I had to get rid of in order to become the, the, the divine feminine, really. Yeah, so, yeah, that was the start of my shamanic awakening. And for anybody that's looking at, sh- you know, going on a shamanic journey, I would never choose to pick a shamanic journey for myself. It's by no means an easy thing to go through um but oh my goodness as it brought me so many gifts and i'm truly grateful to mother earth for that so yeah so my my journey now is my connection to mother earth that's took all my life but the last four years um and it's brought me to the womb healing which is um I think the two rites for me in the money key was the day keepers, the Pampa Masaya Carpe and the earth keepers, the Karak, Akarak okay. uh, Carpe. So it was about, it was about the altar. It was about the altar and the sacred space that I could create for another person, the portal, if you like. And 
to me, the Earth Keeper linked me into my galactic angelic frequencies. And so they brought in this emergence of the figure of eight. They kept showing me this figure of eight shape and the sacred geometry and the light language that came from that um, really just opened me up to much higher timelines of healing. And um, and that's where I'm at now. It's kind of like, okay, what do I do with all this now? It's, you know, it's so sacred and beautiful. Um, and I, I feel really blessed to have gone through what I've gone through. Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah, so... I mean when you when you yeah, look it, you, it's a journey yeah and you, and you tell your tell your journey tell your story it's you know there's been a lot of hard times like a lot of us go through hard times but if you looked at when your when your grandfather passed and began his journey you were 19 years of age so you had a certain amount of maturity there but still a certain amount of innocence you know, so that time was very important. And then with your your yeah. companion, your 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 dog passing and that as well. And and we know now that it's not just a I mean, a dog is a family member, but it's a soulmate as well. And it can bring up the emotions of ones that have passed before that we haven't done the work to to clear or to um to come to terms with in so many ways. And and we know that by the work that we do. So in a way, and then going into the field. And just having it, to I mean, I'm, I got the, I can feel it. The, the the goosebumps is that you're in there, lying lying down on the field, thinking, oh my, oh, God, yeah. I'm I'm, yeah. I'm scared to heck, I could die, and then just that release. I mean, after after that that feeling, what, what what was that like? What did you feel like after when you got up from that field, or even a day or so after? Yeah. Oh, well, in that moment, uh, I was lucky I'd got Archie, my dog, with me at that point because I think that Archie was meant to be with me until I got through this. Uh, and then when he knew that I was settled and I'd released his fear, you know, it was his time to leave. And um, he came with me into the field and it was just the most beautiful evening with the, the, the most incredible skies here in North Yorkshire, right next to the Dales. There's hardly any light pollution. And um, I remember just crying and screaming and saying things. I can't even remember now what I was saying and doing this in this release. But afterwards, I looked up at the stars and the sky and I just thought, I'm, I'm free of that now. I've, I've freed myself. And it, and it was almost funny. <laughs> it sounds ridiculous, but I, I wanted to laugh because... Because I could see the beauty and the magnificence of everything that I kind of was frightened to look at before that. And ever since then, I've, I've gone to the point where White Eagle took me. And, um, yeah, I just honour myself in, this, in the moon cycles um, because I think... And it's, I think this is an important part to say for anybody going through cancer, and this is cl close to my heart. You can have Western medicine and we know that, you know, it can work together. Um, I asked spirit before I went on that journey um, with the, because I'd been to India prior to getting diagnosed and, and studied Ayurveda, which was amazing. And when I got diagnosed, I remember just thinking to myself, I haven't got time for this. <laughs> I've got so much going on right now, you know? I was so angry. Um, and I wanted to just go back to India and, and do the more holistic approach. But I'd got a daughter, I have a daughter, and the pull to stay on this planet for her took me down the more conventional route. But I did say to spirit, how is this going to end? You know, I, if I'm going to die, you know, I, I want to know because what's the point in going through all that if I'm just going to die at the end of it all? And and at that moment, Christ, the Christ consciousness came in and it was Christ and said, whichever path you choose, it's going to be okay. And in that moment, I was the peace that came over me, but I didn't get the answer that I wanted. I got the answer that I needed. What he was saying is trust the path. 
Trust yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. Trust trust us to hold you. And and I, and at that point I didn't it, it almost became not important the end result. What became important was that I built up this trust in in spirit. Um it took me to fall down the bottom of the stairs and stub my toe <laughs> for Christ to come in and say, I'm here. <laughs> but it was a moment. It was just a moment of, I can't do this. I can't make that decision. And as you know, I'm sure, Jamie, spirit always come in at the right moment. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's important to say for anybody going through any kind of illness, um, trust trust in something bigger than you in something bigger than you and believe that you can stay on this planet for as long as you choose yeah is my belief empower yourself to believe yeah yeah this is such a big one as well and i'm always getting messages coming through to me as well from spirit saying you know um have faith trust trust and faith trust and faith trust and faith all the time and that from there and and you know yeah. you, you stubbed your toe um i don't know how many times i've tripped up running i think three three times in the last six months and oh not again what what, what haven't i learned what about what am i not looking at yeah. uh, the messages were coming through there and it's and when you become open to it and the first messages start to come through and you become aware of those messages and listen to them, then they come through more and, and stronger, don't they? They really do. They do. They do. And I think for me, the biggest, the biggest advice for me as myself, now looking back on the journey that I've done, and I'm I'm no, you know, no by no means kind of there, we're never there, but I've come a long way on this journey. And I would say to anybody surrender surrender and that that's been the biggest part of this journey for me to surrender enough for spirit to come and work through me has been you know the hardest bit because I, I didn't want to let go I was literally holding on for dear life they've had to go like <laughs> take your fingers off and release yourself from this grip and allow yourself to soar like the eagle, you know? And that one little finger was holding on for a long time. And I, I, I made that really difficult for myself because when you start to fight your own soul, you start to then get the, um, the resistance, pain and discomfort in the body. And yeah, I started to then start to, I started to feel pains and things, and then I started to question if the cancer was back. And then, you know what I mean? So you're going on a bit of a backward spiral again, and, and Spirit's just saying, re release yourself from this. You're just going to keep going round in circles. And so I would definitely say surrender and letting go is yeah. the hardest part of this journey. But when you do, it, it, it changes everything. It changes everything your yeah. view of life and the fact that you can flow through life and not be bogged down with the 3D stuff, the materialism and where's the money going to come from and how am I going to manage this? And, you know, it, it it requires us to trust and faith and surrender those three for me. Yeah. yeah. Big. No, they are. They are big. And I think they're, they're big for a lot of us out there as well. But um, going back to before, you know, talking about the rights of the moon, I key, um, obviously you transmit and you pass on those rights as, as well as I do as well. And the, the, the people that I have worked with have, has, have seen some amazing results and really life saving, uh, life saving, life changing uh, results with the, with the rights of the moon, I key. Uh, that's men and women, ones that have been quite skeptical to the start. By the time you get to your second or third right, they're starting to, 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 to soften a little bit and then it just gets better and better. I mean, can you explain a little bit for, for people listening out there? Because 
although we're both doing it, there's a lot of other people, um, especially with the, you know, the, the trainings that we have had, and we all do it a little bit differently. I mean, my way of, of passing on the rights will be different than your way. So you will attract the people that you need, and I attract the people that, that I feel that I need to work with as well. But can you um, please just explain a little bit about the rights of the moon I key, what they are and, 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 and how it works? I mean, for me, um, I was guided to the rights through uh, Mama Jaguar coming in for me very strongly um, because of the divine feminine aspect um, where I was in my journey. I was opening up to Isis and Mother Mary and, you know, the goddess, the mother, the mother uh, energy. And so the jaguar spirit came in it wasn't that i went looking for money key it was the jaguar spirit can you hear me jamie yep yep yeah, got me so the jaguar spirit kept coming to me and I, I and i could see it in my meditation and i didn't i didn't know what it was trying to say and then you know how it works you know three times I saw it on a car and and then I saw um, an advertisement on Facebook for it and I and I was drawn to a, a girl that was doing it and um, yeah and that's where it started to open up but that was a good year before I did anything about it and um, for me the rights I needed to for me personally I needed to go through the rights to deepen my connection to Mother Earth and to my my galactic heritage and what it did for me is it brought me it brought it brought me back to myself in a much bigger way if that makes sense it kind of solidified who I was through doing those rites and the womb right for me was the sort of calling the divine feminine calling me um, but I needed to go through the whole rise to understand what the womb right was. Um, oh, it, it kind of also weaves in all my my teachings and learnings from uh, the chakras and seeing my higher self when I was younger through the chakras and the and the crystals and just just the deep connection to who mother earth is to me and and to me i'm here for her that that's what i got from the rights i'm here for her as as a um, an anchor of light through these times to stabilize mother earth as a lot of us are um and we've come from all over the universe you know pleiades and Sirius and you know all the stars we are star keepers and we are here for the love that we have for mother earth and that's the way I'm a, a higher version of me um and it's beautiful the love I have for mother earth has really strengthened the love I have for myself and I think that really keeps the divine feminine energy you know mm. pumping uh, out you know yes. to the rest of the world yeah, yeah. Energetically. Yes, yes, yeah. It, 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 yeah, they are, it's a, the wonderful, it's a wonderful something, uh, I was going to say something for our toolkit, but it's more than that to pass on to people and the connection with, whether we call it Pachamama, Mother Gaia, Mother Earth, um, Great Spirit, whatever there. And that is so important at the moment. And of course, bringing the, bringing the feminine, the divine feminine oh. back in into here is just uh, is so, uh, so important, so necessary at this particular point of time. You know, and from a male perspective, when I do the right, especially with, with men on the 10th right, you know, we're calling in their feminine, uh, their feminine energy and uh, their lineage as well as we pass on that right. In fact, I'm doing one tonight. Uh, as the last rite with a with a gentleman this evening there, and he's had some uh, wonderful transitions all the way through the rites, and this is this will will carry on with this tenth rite, the rite of the womb tonight, um, and that's so so very important. Um, when people contact you or they want to inquire or find out they're listening to this podcast, um, what is your how do you go about it when you are first introduced to people? 
Yeah, so at the moment, because I've been going through a lot of my own transitions, um, you can you could be able to contact me on the mamamoo.me. So it's mama is mama earth. Moo is the Lemurian. Um, I would call myself a Lemurian shaman if I was going to call myself anything because it's bringing in the higher frequencies to connect with mother earth and the codes that we can bring through Lemuria. So mama, M-A-M-A-M-U dot me at outlook.com yeah, um, and also uh, I'm on Facebook as well. Fantastic. And, and we'll put that down below in that as well, though, those details so people can, can find you in that from there. Um, and we were calling, you know, we work with a shamanic energy medicine like you um, as a lot of my modalities I've le learnt over the 40 plus years I've worked in the natural healing field and it comes together. And um, But people think and they hear the word um, shaman or shamanic uh, practitioner and they have different views about it but really um, it, it is not that scary or or, um, or th something to be you know to shy away from is it it's it's a beautiful way to work with people it's it's who we are yeah it's who we are we're having to reconnect back with mother earth uh, because mother earth is is our body we so we're actually connecting back to our bodies this is a, an amazing piece of kit and we've got to look after it while we're on the planet. And so, yeah, shamanism for me is about reconnecting back to the self. And, you know, some of us have done this work ahead of time just to share our experiences and hold space for others. I think we have to be a witness to other people's sacred story. And I like to think that I'm creating a space, a portal of healing for people um to to be able to just talk about the, their story mm. and um and you know connect at that level and like you through my life coaching and holistic health and the body work and reflexology and all those things you know it, it, it kind of likes the toolbox that we can use to pull things out as well as being connected to spirit it really just brings a unique you know, an individual and unique uh, healing modality, whether it's you doing it or me doing it, you know, we're, we're kind of guided to the people that we need in that moment, aren't we? So, yeah, it, it's nothing to worry about or be scared of. Just open yourself up and surrender. That You know, that's my advice. Yeah, very, very much like that as well. And that we talk about coming in with a, with a beginner's mind uh, and just having, just being open open to what's about to happen and you know we work with the energy yeah. center and then we start to go a little bit deeper because we all have different things that we need to work on and i think that's very important if there's some um, one thing yeah. that um, you'd like to, to share with people um about the, the work that you do and the shamanic energy work plus all the other stuff that you do um what would you like to share with people I think um, the future me wants to work in uh, sacred circles and um, facilitate the womb healing because I think, um, well, I know <laughs> that the womb is is our creative expression and it's holding too much pain right now. We're holding seven generations of pain and trauma in the womb. so even if you're a person listening to this and you haven't been affected in the womb space through, you know, miscarriage or abortion or rape and all those things that women have endured over seven generations and before that, you're all in the template of your, your ancestors within your womb, which connects to Mother Earth's cosmic womb. And we as women and men, because men can hold that space and they come from the womb so men can do this work as well and i i hope and i see lots of communities doing womb healing as well as the money key with men holding that space for women and that's what i'm i'm hoping to do and and looking forward to doing with people in future um we need to honor we need to honor the woman and what she's gone through because we're holding that within us and the masculine energy, you know, we need the masculine energy to help us do that as the divine protectors. So, yeah, the community is where I 
see myself in the future and face to face in sacred space in the fire and the water and you know we we need that we need that and mother earth wants wants us to do that as well because she, she's involved then we need to be outdoors more and connecting with her i think so yeah, yeah. No, i look forward to that in the future I, I think so. The, the outdoors, it just uh, it just feels right. It feels comfortable. And, of course, we know it's been a part of our, our heritage. I mean, that's where everything used to happen in front of the fires um, of ancient times. And, of course, that's where we communicated. Uh, and that's what's lacking today, as you said, is the, is the communication. Uh, we, we don't have that. But, um, but, Lisa, listen, you know, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on here. And um, I say this to a, a number of the people that come on. and, and Welcome. Share- is to come on again and then let's go deeper because there's so many subjects there I could have just picked yeah. out. It could have been at least a dozen there, which, you know, we could go deeper on. And as I said before, people are really wanting to 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 find out more about this. So um, just before we wrap up, is there anything else you'd like to share just before we, we, uh, we finish this? No, I think that's it. I just want to say thank you to you, Jamie, because it's okay. just great. I know these these videos aren't always easy, you know, to sort of navigate. So, and, and I'm I'm needing help with my website and things. So, any any sort of support there, but just to, to thank you and honour you, because um, we need more divine masculines out there, you know, stepping up. Yeah, it is. It's bringing it all together, and and uh, that is so important with around the fire and and support and holding safe space, which we talked about before. We haven't even got yeah. into that, uh, into the death, and gone into that, and so many other things in that as well. So, uh, we're going to have to do this again for sure. Yeah. Uh, but um, again, uh, quick to, to share at webdesignshare.com. Thank you very much for all your help. Please like, share, comment um subscribe do those things so i can get more people uh, on here to share what they have because one size doesn't fit all uh, and that's so important there's so many different modalities out there and we're learning and growing and changing as we go along so hey thank you everybody to, for coming on and listening to the becoming podcast thank you lisa and thank you. catching up with you all soon aho namaste and bye for now